Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, I have to apologize because I was not able to be on Monday at the embassy. I would have liked to welcome you myself. But uh, I was in Bremen installing our new honorary consul who would be covering three uh, lenders. So I had to be there and to be with the minister president of Bremen, which, by the way, a very nice uh, city. Uh, I choose on, on the topic, you know, that, that you have uh, maybe to start your uh, conference as, uh, you know, to talk about Africa as a, a growing power. And I wanted to give you an example of what an African country and maybe more than one are uh, doing in the field of renewable energies. We have been talking these days of renewable energies everywhere, especially in Germany. And uh, the Desert Tech Initiative, which is the topic of, of uh, the moment, everybody is talking about that, and I wanted to show you that maybe in the future Africa might play a prominent role in uh, providing electricity to, to Europe. So uh, this is the topic I, I choose because it's something very concrete and something we are really working on, and maybe I have the opportunity to answer your, your questions. Uh, first, I have to tell you that uh, I will be uh, uh, giving you an overview of the uh, current energy situation in Morocco, and then our national strategy on energy, and maybe talk about some projects and say a few words about uh, Desertec. First of all, I would like to tell you that Morocco has no fossil fuels. We import 96% of our energy needs, and our energy needs are increasing uh, to just uh, as a result of the performance of our economy, which is growing at a rate of 5% uh, annually. In 2009, the uh, government launched a national energy strategy that promotes the development of renewable energies with three uh, goals to, to achieve. First, to satisfy the country's growing demand for energy. Second, to reduce our dependence on foreign imports. And third, to preserve the environment. Morocco has no oil resources, but the country has been blessed by, with abundant natural resources of the future. And this is the case for all African countries. We have sun, we have wind, we have sea. And I will try to explain to you how we can use this to provide electricity for our populations and for the development. Morocco enjoyed 3,000 hours of sun, making it perfectly positioned to build large scale of solar energy power. If I want to compare, Germany is 1,700 uh, hours, almost uh, double. And you have seen that even with half of this energy, Germany is doing a lot on renewable uh, energy. Uh, wind also. Speed, speed of wind is one of the greatest in this part of, of Africa. In some regions, the uh, speed for wind is more than nine seconds, uh, meter by second. So it's, it's really a great location, and we have been working on that to be able to use this energy and to produce um, electricity. This is the first slide I want to show you is about Morocco and uh, the wind. It's not very clear because uh, the, uh, you cannot see the numbers. It's 5.5 uh, kilowatt per square meter. This is this is this region, and uh, this is three to uh, three five point five square uh, meters. But as as you see, it is we enjoy a lot of sun, and we have been using this to produce electricity. The second slide shows the wind speed. The wind speed is, uh, in some places here, it's over six meters per second, which is really, really strong. 
And I told you in some regions it reaches nine meters per second, which is the strongest speed you can get anywhere in, in the world. And it's the reason why we are positioned in Morocco, not only to produce uh, electricity from solar energy, but also from uh, wind. Also, you can see that there is a very long coastline on the Atlantic Ocean and on the Mediterranean. We are not talking that much today about energy we can get from the ocean. But we have started studies on that because you can, you know, sun, you don't have it at night, wind, it stops sometimes, but uh, the energy you get from the ocean never stops. So there is also a lot of studies to be able to produce electricity from uh, the ocean, and the, especially the Atlantic Ocean, and to provide electricity to small cities. Our program is to <coughs> produce by 2020 2,000 megawatt solar energy, 2,000 megawatt wind, and 2,000 megawatt hydraulic. And to save energy consumption by 15%. Uh, our energy mix will be, and this is a very, very ambitious target, to produce 42% of our electricity from renewable uh, energy. And 2020 is very close, and I will show you that uh, we can reach this target and uh, what we have been doing for, uh, for that. Uh, first, we had to, uh, yes, this is the mix, yeah, 42% uh, from um, renewable energy. So to reach this target, we had to provide first the uh, leg legal framework for uh, investors and the operators. And three major laws have been passed in 2009. First was to be able to help everyone to invest in uh, energy, which was only a public thing, only uh, public companies or the government could invest in, in energy. Now it's open and energy is considered like any other commodity that could be produced, uh, used, sold on the domestic market or um, exported. So the first, the first law was to liberalize the, the sector and to uh, make everyone um, able to invest in private or public uh, companies. What is important also is that we, you know, if you produce electricity, you have to distribute it. And to distribute it, you have to be connected to the grid. And uh, we granted this connection to the grid by law, which is something very important. I think we are the only country that has that has done that for the moment is that when you invest by law, you are connected, you can be connected to the grid. The only thing you would have to do is just to negotiate the conditions, how much you will pay uh, and uh, what power you need, how much electricity you need to transport, but you will not have to discuss or to get from the government the possibility to be connected to, to the grid. The second very important thing that we did is that we created an agency dedicated to solar energy. So when you come and you want to invest in solar energy, you have only one body to deal with and you will discuss any question, any um, um, problem concerning your investment will be done by, by this body that has just been um, uh, created. And, uh, the third thing is we created also an uh, agency for uh, energy efficiency. You know, you don't have only to produce electricity, but you have also to use electricity in the best way. So you have also an agency which is dedicated to uh, uh, energy efficiency. More in incentive measures have been taken. One is that we uh, created an energy development fund 
of one million dollars that will help companies who will start to invest in, in the sector, putting in place infrastructure, helping and developing research and development centers, building partnerships, uh, selecting developers, etc. So this fund can be uh, used for, for that. Second, education. We introduced in our university a new degree in wind and solar technology so we can uh, provide the engineers and the people who can work on the uh, sector. And we also created special zones dedicated to uh, this uh, renewable energy or clean energy. What are the projects that we have started? I will talk about wind. We have already uh, four locations for wind parks, one in Tetuan, which is 50 megawatt, another one in Tangier, 140 megawatt, second one in Tetuan, 30 megawatt, and this one in Esawea. These are really locations where there is a lot of, of uh, wind. Five new uh, projects are underway. And a third one in Tetuan of 120 uh, megawatt. Then again, Tetuan, 50 uh, megawatt. Tarfaya in, in the south, 300 megawatt. And two projects in Layun, 200 megawatt and 50 uh, megawatt. So by 2012, the total capacity will be 720 megawatt, and by 2015, uh, we will uh, reach the target of 1,150 megawatt. If we talk about solar, capacity of 2,000 megawatt, the estimated cost is $9 billion. Uh, uh, dollars, and we have selected five sites for 10,000 uh, hectares. This is the first project, maybe you heard about that, the first project is in Wazazat, that will be starting soon, uh, 500 megawatt, the surface that will be needed is 2,500 uh, megawatt, and it will generate 1,150 gigawatt per year hour per year, which is gigantic. I mean, it's a very, very huge project. When you hear about wind farms or solar uh, projects, it's 100, 150 megawatt. This one will be 500 megawatt. This is the first one that we have started uh, with, and uh, I will show you where we are with this project. The second one is uh, a little bit on the east, northeast of, of Morocco, 400 uh, megawatt will need 2,000 hectares. Another one uh, of another one of 500 megawatt in the south here. Another one in Bujdor, 100 megawatt, and the last one uh, uh, here in, in uh, near Layoun of uh, 500 megawatt. Which these five major sites will provide to uh, 1,000 megawatt a year. The projects, this is the timetable. We announced the first projects in, two, uh, in November 2009, and we had a pre-selection in October 2010 that uh, it will end this, this month. We have uh, in the short list now 19 companies, 200 companies were in the tender, and now we have only um, 19 companies. Four of them are, are German. And then the construction will start in the third quarter of 2011, and it will, it will enter into service in 2015. Uh, these uh, uh, projects will be done on a private and public uh, partnership. It's not that we are just calling people, please invest and, and sell us the technology. It will be done. Each uh, step of the projects will, will be done on a partnership the location, the technology, um, the production, and everything will be done in this partnership. And this is what we have uh, started to do, and it's doing very well with the Germans. Now, the companies that are involved in our products are from the United States, 
Japan, Great Britain, uh, Germany, Spain. A few words about hydraulic. First, uh, we are talking of Africa. I would like to um, point out something that in Morocco, we are, I think, the only country, not only on the African um, continent, we are the only country where our rivers start and finish on the Moroccan territory. We, are, we do not share any river with any other country, which means that we don't, we don't have any conflict with other countries about the use of water. You know, you know that, you will hear more about that because water will be the issue of the years to come and you will see that they will have more and more problems about using water, especially when you share it with, with someone uh, else. Uh, it contributes now to 4.4% of energy uh, consumption. We have 27 hydraulic sites. Two other sites are under development and in 2020 we will reach 14% uh, of our energy uh, mix. Let's talk about the involvement of Germany because we are in Germany. I am representing Morocco here and I'm very much involved with the German on this, on this project. So not only their companies are present in Morocco and they have <coughs> started to work with that on that, but we got some uh, finances and for uh, loans from, from, from uh, the Germans, uh, this financial support to Tanger and Esawia, 50 million uh, euros each uh, for hydraulic energy, 137 million euros, and for uh, solar energy in rural areas, 5.1 million. The total subsidies we got is 252 million. This means not very much when we are talking of renewable energy because we are talking of billions of, of dollars. But uh, finding the financial support is not really the problem in this sector. The, uh, you have just to uh, get the best technology and to be able to have the best prices. For the moment, the price of electricity from wind is really cheaper. Electricity is still expensive. It's the reason why you need to mix with maybe exports because the price of electricity is uh, um, um, higher in, in Europe. But I think with the development of technology, prices are going uh, down. They already uh, do. Uh, desert Tech projects. The philosophy of Desert Tech project is to connect the MENA region, I mean from Morocco, from Mauritania, to Saudi Arabia, to connect with, some, uh, with cables, uh, and to provide electricity from solar or wind uh, energy, provide electricity to uh, Europe, and to be able to um, fulfill 15% of the needs of, the, uh, of Europe. You have, uh, maybe you heard a lot about Desert Tech Project, that people are talking about Desert Tech Project. If you talk to experts here in Germany, they will tell you, uh, while we have been talking about this among experts in, in Germany, uh, the Moroccans have started the projects already, because what we are doing is that we are producing electricity from renewable energy for our own needs, for uh, exports, and it's exactly the philosophy of, of this attack. And uh, because of that, uh, because we have been going so fast, uh, we have been selected by Desert Tech for the first pilot project. And this pilot project will be also of 500 uh, megawatt. Uh, this, uh, I, I, I missed one slide. Yeah, this one, sorry. This slide is about the connection that we have with, with Europe. Morocco is already connected to Spain since 1997. We have two lines of 400 kilovolts. The capacity is 1,400 1, megawatt, and we have a project of a third line which will be starting soon. We are also connected to uh, Algeria, on, on the east, also with uh, uh, this uh, 446 kilometers long capacity line, we have 
two already and a third one in, in uh, uh, progression. This is very important because it's not only producing electricity, but being able to provide electricity to Europe. And this is what we have as a target in our uh, project. In 2009, we imported 18% of our electricity from Spain for a very simple reason, because of the crisis. They needed less energy in Spain, so the price of electricity went down, and it was better for us to import electricity from Spain than to uh, produce it. So it works already. You know, some people are talking about, uh, is it possible to exchange electricity with, with Africa? Yes, it's a reality. It's not only possible, it's a reality. What I would like to uh, outline also is I give you this example just from Morocco because it's the one I'm familiar with. But if you talk to my colleagues or if you go in other countries, you will see that same projects are going on or um, uh, countries are getting ready in Tunisia, in Algeria, in Libya. Uh, discussions are taking place in able, uh, to make it real and to be able to produce electricity for our domestic needs and to export um, electricity. This is what I wanted to share with you because we always talk about uh, Africa and say, okay, Africa is raw material uh, that we can get and we can process everything in, in Europe. Uh, we have here a case where we are developing technology in cooperation with, uh, with Europe, in cooperation with all other uh, countries and being able to develop a source of energy which will be essential in, in the future. The population is growing, the needs for energy will be going higher and higher. And if you uh, do not control or if you don't have enough energy, you will be in trouble. So we have starting started, we are going very, very fast. We have a very ambitious uh, uh, target. And, uh, you know, I have this strange feeling because since last year, no one was talking to Morocco about energy because we don't have energy. We, as I told you, we import 96% of our uh, energy from uh, everywhere. And because of this project and because uh, we went so uh, far and so fast, we are now invited everywhere. Everyone is talking to us. Everyone is sharing with us. And we have this feeling that we almost became an energy power in renewable energy. And I can tell you, uh, I have been here for six years. No one talked to me about energy uh, since the beginning of this year. I am inviting, invited everywhere, even the Green Party invited me in, in uh, Stuttgart in, in, in a meeting of the party to talk about what we are doing and what I think and how I feel about this attack. I am invited also in Chelsea Olstein to talk about uh, uh, energy and uh, yeah, this is something I wanted to share with you. This one, you leave it there, it has a special purpose. Uh, sun is not only to produce electricity, you can find sun everywhere. And I brought to you uh, clementines from Morocco, and I hope you will have the opportunity to taste them. They are really good. It's what I will be distributing to many people here for Christmas. And uh, yeah, this is one for you, Mr. Donfrey. That's the reason why I said this one is a special one. Eloy, your new daughter will need some vitamins and you will get really, really good ones right here. So please feel free to take and to, to try them and I hope you will enjoy them and you will feel the sun that is also in the tangerines. So thank you for attention and I can answer any one of your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, who would like to make the first question or comments? And then please, if you could introduce yourself as well, so that the ambassador knows who you are. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador. Uh, Elvis from Namibia. Uh, my question is, um, I mean, there's so much emphasis placed on renewable energy as a result of uh, climate change. 
Yeah, but uh, we are all aware that it's not, it's still very much developing, it's still at its infant stage, the renewable energy source. And uh, yet, uh, I come from Namibia, where I've made an experience where, where, whereby there's also a rush for, 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 for uranium. Uh, of, of the, the demand for uranium as a source of power has also increased over, over years. So I would like to find out, is, that, is there no, is, is an, is an, is there no uh, contradiction? Or well, we are here advocating for renewable energy in the name of climate change, yet there's also a rush, a great demand for uranium. Thank you. No, it's, I don't think you have to connect renewable energy with climate change. You have to uh, connect renewable energy with the fact that the uh, traditional sources of energy will finish in a few years. Some talk about 60 years, 50 years, 70 years, who knows? That's the first point. So you need to develop another source of energy. This one is available on time. Uh, the technology has been developed we are already using renewable energy. The investments of Germany, they have no sun. The uh, investments in Germany is huge and they are talking of 8,000 megawatts of wind uh, energy. So the idea is to have an alternative source of energy. But at the same time, it's a clean one. So it's a good thing to produce a source of energy that is not polluting and will be a substitute to the traditional sources of energy. If you take a country like Morocco, we need billions of dollars or billions of euros to import energy. And we have uh, energy everywhere. So we have started because even if people say it's too expensive, because many people have not started to invest because they find it very expensive to produce uh, electricity from solar energy. So you cannot sell it at the same price you are selling electricity now. So, okay, are you going to give subsidies? How are you going to provide electricity to a reasonable price? But uh, we think that in the future, the technology will be able to provide electricity from solar energy as a, at a very good uh, price. It's already uh, going down. But the other sources of energy are uh, getting uh, more expensive. You know, we are talking of $100, $60 for the barrel for petrol, and petrol is not available everywhere. <clears throat> it's a really a source, uh, I mean, for, for environment, it's a really a problem. So we are developing these sources of, <clears throat> of energy. Um, <clears throat> nuclear energy, um, if, if it's that your, your question. <clears throat> you know, that's a very big debate. Uh, it's a source of energy that is used by many countries. Um, you have to be able to, um, how to say, to control the technology because you have to run a facility for a nuclear uh, energy. It's a big debate in Germany if you have been following what's happening here. Um, everyone is, is talking about uh, nuclear energy, shall we stop that? They, they said, no, we would give a momentum of more years. It was a very strong debate uh, among the parties in, in the Bundestag because they say, no, some say we need this source of energy, some others say this is too dangerous and the waste is a, a real problem, so we shouldn't all of us go into this source of energy. And then you have the civil use of, of, of energy, uh, of nuclear energy. We are also talking about that in Morocco because some countries come to us and say, you should also invest in uh, nuclear energy. We are ready to uh, sell to you uh, nuclear facilities in order to uh, produce electricity. The French president was uh, uh, recently uh, in, in, uh, it was in India. So in India, I think they signed for two nuclear facilities that will be built by, by the French. So, yes, uh, nuclear energy is a big debate. Some are thinking that this is the best way to produce uh, cheap uh, energy. 
Um, some others say this is dangerous if everyone goes into nuclear energy. In Morocco, there is also a debate on that. We are talking because uh, are we able with renewable energy to fulfill all our needs? This is not, I don't think this is possible, but we are investing a lot of it. Debate has also taken place on nuclear energy. Some countries are coming to us and say you should also invest in that. No decision has been taken for the moment, but you're right. It's, it's important uh, to talk about that because uh, many uh, countries are investing in that. And then uh, are we going to find enough uranium? Uh, are we able to uh, control all the facilities? Are we um, able to avoid any accident with nuclear facilities? All these questions are on, on, on the table. Thank you. My name is uh, Patrick Osakwe, and I'm from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development in Geneva. Um, I find this project very interesting. I think uh, poor infrastructure is one of the major constraints inhibiting Africa's ability to diversify its economy, mm. uh, particularly uh, energy infrastructure. Uh, so, in that context, I find this project very interesting. Unfortunately, most African governments are not, they've been talking about, you know, the need to develop uh, energy infrastructure, but they've not taken any proactive steps towards, you know, addressing the, the issue. So, in that context, I find Morocco's uh, attempt to, you know, look forward by developing a renewable energy uh, sources are uh, very interesting. And I do hope that Morocco would also make uh, an effort to, uh, sort of spread this news to other African countries and hopefully they will, you know, uh, borrow from Morocco's example. The question that I have for our ambassador is, um, I, you did mention that uh, there is foreign participation in the development of these uh, projects. Uh, is there any provision within the plan uh, for the development of local capacities to maintain these facilities, you know, in the long run? Yeah. yeah first, we, we have been the first ones to invest and to go fast in this, but it doesn't mean that we are not sharing that with others. And I told you that partnership is a key point in what we are doing. And we are already talking with Senegal and with Burkina Faso. They are the first ones we have started to talk. And they came to us and, and we are sharing with them what we are doing. And uh, what is important is that uh, everyone will benefit from what we are doing. If we make some mistakes, they will avoid them. Uh, if new technologies are developed, they will uh, acquire them. They will get these new technologies. And uh, we really are opening uh, the way for, for everyone, and we are discussing with, with everybody. Morocco is very uh, much involved on the African continent, um, a little bit now in, in uh, renewable energy, but we are involved in, in water, we are involved in health, we are involved in education, uh, all kind of, of trainings, and uh, yeah, you all come from African continent, we have uh, more than 9,000 African students in Morocco with 97% of, of them have Moroccan scholarships and they are studying in our universities and 100%, uh, maybe a little bit less of them go back to the country. Some stay because they get married in Morocco and they prefer, they prefer to settle in, in Morocco. But this is a very successful program and as I told you we have started in our university a degree to prepare people to renewable energy because you have to handle uh, this. We have engineers now in our engineer schools and uh, others who, uh, who are trained and formed in uh, universities in Europe and elsewhere many of them in uh, German uh, universities and, and I think we will have enough time to prepare people. These projects have just uh, started. Uh, engineers are already uh, there. If you go to any um, school for engineers, you will see that many, many, many of them go to this renewable sector because this is this is the future. Many years ago, you go to any university and everyone is, is talking about computers. And everyone was specialized on computers because that was the future. It's still the future. But now, 
everyone is oriented or uh, orienting his children to renewable energy because it will be a big, big market and uh, many opportunities for uh, Africans, engineers, uh, not only in Africa, but even in, in Europe or elsewhere. Thank you. First, go back and then go to the Thank you. His Excellency, with due respect, I, I want to know on the scene of the new partnership for African Development, NEPAD, and the APRM, African Peer Review Mechanism. Is there anything Morocco is doing to facilitate sharing in the African partnership? for development, and also in the peer review uh, system. Are there any impartation in these projects to other African countries, apart from Burkina Faso and Senegal that you mentioned? I, I believe that it's supposed to be uh, something that will you know, spread further than that, not until when uh, they come seeking for information. Because at the level of Nepal, it's supposed to be a willing approach to, to give out ideas and rub hearts on how to move Africa forward as an entity. Yeah. Few, when I mentioned Senegal and Burkina Faso, it was just to give an example because we have just started to talk with them because they showed some interest. They heard about, about that. Uh, I, I have in my documents a list because the ambassador of Kenya, we talked uh, last week about the uh, companies that are involved, the German companies that are involved in Morocco and the big German companies in this sector. And uh, he asked me to provide a list and uh, he said that he might be here this morning. So I have the list for him here. So uh, to mention another country, Kenya is very, very much also involved in renewable energy and with the Germans also. So. It's a, a new thing that is uh, uh, now on the desk of everybody. A few years ago, or even a few months ago, no one was talking about renewable energy. It uh, was some very expensive, maybe no need for that. The, all those who have uh, um, gas and, and oil are not very much interested. A uh, few uh, years ago, a few months ago, you couldn't talk about an electric, an electric car. Uh, Last month, oh, beginning, oh, yeah, end of last month, we had a big meeting organized by BMW and the Chinese, in partnership with the Chinese, and they are talking of the new electric car that will be ready in 2011, uh, which was not, I mean, electric cars, the technology have been developed for so many years, but no one was investing in electric cars. So. Uh, yes, African countries are more and more interested and more and more involved. I gave you uh, cases because this, these are the ones I have in mind, but if you go through all the African continents, if you go to uh, South Africa, we mentioned uh, Namibia here, they are also uh, very much involved. So all the African countries are now thinking also renewable uh, energy. Maybe there was a time when everybody thought that, oh, this technology is not easy, this technology is not manageable, this technology is too expensive. Yeah, but this was a few uh, months ago. Now everyone is saying, yes, this is the future. Oh, sorry. This is the future. It's just an alarm. It's not a, uh, This is uh, the future, and we should be uh, investing in that. And this source of energy, as, as a whole, I mean, in the NEPAD, I'm not very familiar with all uh, the projects that are now in the NEPAD. We are one of the initiators of the NEPAD, but it has not started yet. I don't know if some projects on renewable energy are in the NEPAD, but yes, why not? I'm sure that the NEPAD will be also a source of uh, financing this kind of, of projects, because this is the future of uh, uh, Africa. 
Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much. Um, my name is Julia Buga. I'm working at World University Service. And uh, I'm very happy to hear about the renewable energy project in Morocco. And uh, moreover, not only because it's an uh, option to have a clean use of energy, but also of the, because of the workplace, as you just mentioned. And um, as you just indicated, it's not only an opportunity for foreign experts to come to Morocco and to show Morocco how to use these uh, renewable energies, but also for Moroccan engineers to yeah, apply their knowledge. And I know there are many uh, Moroccan students studying uh, technologies here in Germany. Is there any figure for them to uh, assume in the next years uh, how many workplaces there might be in the highly qualified sector? Yeah. Uh, you know that we have been talking with uh, Mr. Donfried about uh, a big event that will be called Germany meets Morocco or Morocco meets Germany. And if I'm invited to talk at this event, I will choose this topic, which will be, uh, I would say, the whole topic of integration. Because it's a big debate here. Uh, we heard many politicians talking about integration. And I would like to maybe give some figures and explain uh, what, what, what is the success of the Moroccan uh, integration of the integration of Moroccans here in Germany. Very few people know that we are more than 100,000 very well integrated. And uh, what is fascinating is that we have around 8,000 students, Moroccan students, in German universities. The students choose to come to Germany. There are no facilities in Morocco for that. I mean, they go to the Goethe Institute, they learn some German. But they uh, decide to uh, waste or to lose one year of studies to be able to speak the German language. Six months in Morocco training at the Goethe Institute and then six months here of training and then they go to the uh, university. We don't give them any scholarships, so they do everything by, by themselves. And we don't have a big tradition like we have with Spain or with France of education because they are present in Morocco and then uh, they have uh, uh, these um, gymnasiums everywhere in, in Morocco, uh, Spanish and French. But 8,000 students, and it was always a big surprise for me to, to discover that. They are very, very successful. Half of them are, or more than half of them, are in engineering schools. And uh, I can tell you that there is a big difference to prepare an engineer in a German school than in another one. Or maybe if I take the French model where I made my studies. Uh, here, people are really prepared to start to work in a company. I mean, when they go in a company, they are ready to start the job. If you uh, come from a French uh, engineer school, I mean, you will need to be trained maybe six months or three months or more in the company before you really start to work, which is completely different from, from Germany. Uh, they, all of them, go back to Morocco. All, I see, I say all of them. And uh, they are very successful, very well trained, and many of them, as I told you, are now uh, specializing in renewable energy. We even have experts who give uh, lectures on renewable, renewable energy and what we are doing here in, in, in Germany. Some are even involved in research. And this is, this is really, this was something very interesting for me to see that so many are here. And these statistics of 8,000 are German statistics. They take into consideration only those who have a Moroccan passport, those who became uh, German, are not in the statistics. It means that there are more and more than that figure in the uh, universities and the engineer schools uh, here, and they are very successful. And uh, they go back, and I'm sure that many of them will find job uh, opportunities in, in Morocco. Additional 
Your Excellency, I was just wondering, are other groups of uh, technicians and scientists in Morocco who, let's say maybe 30, 40 years ago, uh, talked about exploiting the sun in Morocco, and now they're telling, I told you so, is that possible? And... So, excuse me, did they tell them? Did they... Were there scientists? Yes. Technicians in Morocco mm -hmm. who talked about earlier, who talked earlier about exploiting the sun resources of Morocco. Yes. And the, has there been any studies that you mentioned electric cars? Have there been any studies about the ozone emissions and what that might mean to the environment? Those are my two questions. Yeah. All those, so I said 40 or 25 or 30 years ago, who were involved in solar, they were in the tourism business not in energy business because no one was thinking that we could use uh, solar energy or wind energy to uh, provide electricity. But now, yeah, it's, it's what everybody is studying because it became a reality and uh, everyone is producing electricity from all kinds of uh, renewable energy. We didn't talk about biomass, we didn't talk of many other possibilities to produce uh, energy. I just mentioned the ocean and the possibility to to use tide uh, and waves to produce uh, energy. Uh, yes, today more more are are involved in in that, but uh, in the past, I mean, no one. I mean, myself, I told you it's only one year or two years ago that we really started to to talk about renewable energy in in such a way, and uh, we started this in 2000, at the end of 2009. And even I remember when I used to talk to uh, people involved in energy in Morocco, and I used to mention solar energy, they used to say, oh, no, Mr. Ambassador, no, we don't talk about solar energy. It's too expensive. We are not going to be involved in that. We talk only wind. It's the reason why when I presented, I showed you that four parks wind parks are already uh, working, I mean, providing electricity because all our engineers were wind-oriented, <coughs> wind energy-oriented. Now everyone is talking about solar, and now we are doing more in solar than we are doing in wind because everyone says, yes, this is maybe the, the future and we can provide electricity from solar than from, uh, uh, from wind. We know that for the moment it's still very expensive uh, and uh, we are talking how we are going to uh, give maybe subsidies to be able to uh, sell uh, energy or electricity from solar energy to uh, companies and, and to private homes. Well, it looks as if uh, that's the, the question, so I'd like to maybe just take this opportunity, if you would allow me, uh, to thank you, Your Excellency, really for a very inspirational presentation, I think, really uh, one of the biggest concerns that I have in the field of cultural diplomacy, and sort of what motivates me also to continue working, is actually this issue of climate change, uh, energy, etc. I mean, these are global problems, these are global challenges that not one country can solve alone. So I think here we see a great example of German-Moroccan cooperation, and as was discussed from the questions, the potential for even greater cooperation within the region and Africa and also beyond. So I think this is really a, a crucial issue. Uh, I think it's a success story. I think it's an inspiration for all of us. And uh, I wanted to thank you for that. Instead of just speaking about Morocco and tourism and it's not really a real world issue that matters to us and that can impact actually all of our lives. So if you could please join me in a very, very sincere thank you for His Excellency. Thank you. Thank you.